The Chinese motoring industry is growing rapidly, and while the coronavirus has put the brakes on progress, it won't be long before the country is back up to speed and working on high-tech EVs to give Teslas a run for their money. But that wasn't always the case. Enter the copycat, a car designed with the sole purpose of profiting from the design of a European car that, at the time, would have been more desirable than one from China. With the Beijing Motor Show just around the corner, we thought we'd celebrate the copycat by listing the 10 best clones to come from China. But before we get into the list, remember to hit the like button and subscribe for even more awesome videos. Oh boy, this was probably one of, if not the most controversial copycats of all time. Debuting at the 2014 Guangzhou Motor Show, the Landwind X7 is a four-door SUV that mixes urban design with the apparent versatility of a go-anywhere off-roader, a bit like a Range Rover Evoque. Coming to think of it, it looks just like an Evoque too. The courts thought the same. While the SUV underwent a light facelift in 2017, it wasn't enough to shake off a lawsuit from Land Rover against Landwind X7 maker Jiangling Motor Corporation. Remarkably, Land Rover won the case, resulting in the Landwind X7 being pulled from sale in 2017 and the Jiangling Motor Corporation paying Land Rover an undisclosed fee. The Landwind X7 isn't the only Land Rover product to have uh, inspired a Chinese car maker to release its own rival. Enter this, the Huanglong Quangxi, a large SUV that looks pretty much exactly the same as a Range Rover Sport. But unlike a Range Rover Sport, which will set you back £65,000 here in the UK and close to £75,000 in China, the Huanglong Guangxi comes in at 159,000 yen, which is the equivalent of about £18,200 here in the UK. That's crazy! But it's clear the company has cut corners on the inside. Still, that's quite literally a lot of car for Ford Fiesta money. What do you get when you crash a Smart 4.4 into the back of a Honda e? Well, you'd either get a complete train wreck or one of these, an Aura R1 electric car. It's China's answer to the brilliant Honda e and while it's a clear copycat, in some respects it actually surpasses the car it takes inspiration from. If you were to race an Aura R1 against a Honda e, the Japanese car would sprint off into the distance as its electric motor produces 134 bhp, considerably more than the R1, which is available in either 47 bhp or 60 bhp form. However, the R1 has an NEDC range of up to 251 miles, which puts the Honda E's 137 mile range to shame. Granted, the Honda was measured using the newer, more accurate WLTP method, but that's still an impressive showing from the little R1. Next up is the Waikaroi V7, a car that looks so similar to the Volkswagen Up that you'd need to be a detective to spot the difference. The front and rear ends are exactly the same, as are the head and tail lights. Even the badge looks similar to VW's own. The V7 is specifically a copy of the E-Up, with its lead acid battery pack allowing you to drive for up to 75 miles on a single charge. Here's the kicker though. The V7 is what's known as an LSEV, or low speed electric vehicle, as it has a maximum speed of just 31 miles per hour. On the bright side, you'll never have to worry about speed limits again. Oh, and it only costs the equivalent of £2,900. Bargain. You may have never heard of the Zotye SR9, but it was one of the most blatant copycats when it made its public debut in China in 2016. Evidently a rip-off of the Porsche Macan, the SR9 was powered by a 2.0-litre inline four-cylinder engine delivering a not very Porsche 188 brake horsepower and 250 Newton meters of torque. A plug-in hybrid was also available, allowing you to drive your not Porsche Macan for 50 miles on electric power alone. Unfortunately, the Zotye SR9 was allegedly pulled from sale in 2018 following financial difficulties. No wonder, really, as the car cost the UK equivalent of £12,000, four times less than Porsche's cheapest Macan. 
If you want to look like a real baller without having baller money, then you can always go for the Huansu C60. At first glance, the C60 looks a lot like a Lamborghini Urus, complete with angular lines, a giant grille and intricate LED headlights. But that's where the similarities end. Like the SR9, the C60 is powered by a 2.0-litre, 4-cylinder turbo engine that pumps out 181 bhp, which pales in comparison to the 641 bhp churned out by the 4.0-litre V8 in the Urus. There are a few caveats here though. The Urus costs £160,000 here in the UK, whereas the C60 was meant to hit the market in the region of yen, which is around £17,000. We say was because the C60 has so far only appeared in concept form and it's looking unlikely the car will see the light of day. Geely is one of the biggest motoring companies in the world, owning some beloved brands such as Lotus, Volvo and the Swedish Marks electric spin-off Polestar. But even a company as big as Geely has dipped its toes into the copycat pool. In 2009, the company unveiled the GE, a luxurious limousine that was not only positioned as a Rolls-Royce Phantom Challenger, albeit one costing just £30,000, but it also took a fair amount of design inspiration from its rival, the main one being that massive grille. But it wasn't a complete clone though. For instance, the GE only had three seats, where the passengers sat by themselves in the back with two sat up front, a bit like a reverse McLaren F1. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum is the BYD F3. Released in 2005, the F3 is pretty much a direct clone of the Toyota Corolla. And even though the car has gone through several major revisions in recent years, it's still based on the same production platform as the 2005 original. That's right, it's still on sale and still looks like a Toyota, only BYD has updated the car's design to reflect newer models from the Japanese car maker. You'd think that if you're going to copy a car, you'd want to set your aspirations a little higher. One of the earliest examples of copycattery on our list is the Lifan 320. Evidently a clone of the new Mini, the Lifan 320 was a small hatchback available with an 81bhp 1.3-litre engine connected to either a 5-speed manual gearbox or oh, a CVT. The 320's biggest problem was that it was horrendously unsafe. While we gawp at cars scoring two or, in ultra-rare circumstances, one star, the Lifan 320 scored zero stars in the Latin NCAP crash test in 2014. That's because the 320 doesn't have anti-lock brakes, isofix points for child seats, or even airbags. Sure, it was much cheaper than a new Mini, but that's probably because it'll crinkle up like a tin can in the smallest of fender benders. Last but certainly not least is the Beijing Auto BJ80. Debuting at the end of 2016 in China, the BJ80 is a shameless clone of the Mercedes-Benz G-Class, complete with boxy proportions and exposed door hinges. The only bit that hasn't been plucked from Mercedes is the grille, which looks like it has come straight from a Jeep. You'd think that such a blatant ripoff would attract the attention of Mercedes, right? After all, Land Rover chased after the makers of the Land Windex 7 and won. Well, the Beijing Auto Industry Corporation has a technical partnership with Mercedes parent company Daimler, which is why the BJ90 looks just like a GLS, because it is one underneath. But you won't find any official Mercedes parts in the BJ80, and it's been rumoured that Daimler aren't happy with their Chinese technical partners over the design of the SUV. That and the BJ80 costs as little as £33,000 in China, whereas import taxes means the G-Class costs the equivalent of £165,000. Jeez. It's worth reiterating that copycats are becoming a bit of a rarity now that the Chinese car market is the juggernaut that it is today. Just think we wouldn't have the Lotus Avaya or Polestar 2 if it wasn't for the Chinese car industry. And then there are the new kids on the block like Neo, which creates some seriously good looking SUVs and a ridiculously powerful hypercar, the EP9. So while we can all have a good laugh at some of China's attempts to inject a little Europeanness into its car industry, it might not be long before you'll be turning down a German car for one made in Beijing.